Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another interesting video. Now in this video we are going to talk about the high voltage DC transmission or HVDC. This isn't a detailed video on HVDC but this is the basic video you need to understand you need to know before you start going deeper inside the HVDC. In this video we are going to talk about why we need to use HVDC, what are some of the limitations of AC transmission then we will see and understand with a basic diagram how the HVDC transmission happens and then we will also talk about the advantages of HVDC and then in the end we will see some of the projects of HVDC. Surely it is going to be an interesting video and make sure you watch it till the end. Now we all know that we generate power in the AC, we transmit the power in the AC and we also distribute the power in the AC. Undoubtedly AC transmission or AC power offers many advantages when we compare it with the DC transmission. There is no doubt about that, that's a very clear statement that we all know. But there are certain scenarios wherein the use of high voltage DC transmission can be beneficial over the high voltage AC transmission. Certainly there are some limitations of HVAC as well which we will talk about and which will give us idea why we use HVDC. Let us start with that. So the first limitation of HVAC is that the inductive and capacitive elements of overhead lines and cables put limit to the transmission capacity and the transmission distance of AC transmission. No doubt when we talk about AC system the word capacitive and inductive comes into picture. Both of these concepts are inevitable when we talk about the AC system and because of that there is certainly a limitation on the amount of power we can deliver and at what distance we can deliver that power. There is certainly a limitation on that. So definitely you cannot build a transmission line which is 2000 km long, you know, delivering 10,000 megawatt or 10,000 gigawatts of power. That is not possible. Why that is not possible? Because of the capacitive and inductive element. They definitely plays a crucial role in deciding the transmission capacity and the distance of that. Now if you are interested to learn more about the AC systems then I have a dedicated playlist on that the basics of AC circuits. I'll provide a link for that down in the description you can go and check it out for more information on the AC circuits. But surely this is one of the biggest limitation of the AC transmission where the capacitive and inductive element puts a limitation on the capacity of transmission and the distance of the transmission that is one. The second limitation that we have is let's say you have two different system two AC systems which is transmitting bulk amount of power. Now if you wish to connect these two system it is practically impossible even though they are in the same frequency but it is practically impossible because uh, it is anticipated that the short circuit levels will reach a skyrocketing values and we do not have any circuit breakers which can break that high short circuit levels right and also it can cause undesirable power flow scenarios which is for sure we should be avoiding. So when you wish to connect two system which is having like bulk transmission capacities the short circuit level will go very very high which is again very tough to uh, quench that short circuit levels there are no breakers available uh, above a certain values of short circuit levels. So that is the second biggest limitation. And the third important limitation is that direct connection between two AC system with different frequencies is not possible. And what I mean by that let us understand with simple example here. So let's say there is one nation which is having 50 hertz frequency and there is another nation which is having 60 hertz frequency. Now if you wish to interconnect these two nations together if you want to transmit power between these two nations then it is not possible because there are frequency difference and the fundamental property to connect to uh, different transmission system is to have same frequency one of the fundamental properties and if it is different then for sure it cannot be connected that is also one of the biggest limitation of AC transmission and in such scenarios the high voltage DC transmission can be a savior but the choice between HVAC and HVDC is done with a thorough study of all the scenarios, all the application and then only the decision is made. 
But these are some of the examples where the HVDC can be the beneficial uh, solution. Now let us quickly look at uh, with the help of a simple diagram how the HVDC transmission happens. So on your screen you can see a simple diagram. We have two AC system. This is the one and this is the second. Now we wish to interconnect these two systems using the HVDC. So first of all what we need is we need a converter station which will convert the incoming AC into DC. So this is basically a rectifier which is converting the incoming AC supply into a DC supply. This is called as the converter station. Clear? So once the power is converted into DC then uh, we can transmit that power. Now here you can see the advantage of HVDC. In HVDC we only need two conductors or two transmission lines or two transmission cables. That is the positive one and the negative one. This is again the advantage that HVDC offers. Now once we reach to the destination then there is one more converter station which will convert the incoming DC into an AC supply. Now this basically acts as an inverter. Clear? Now once the power is inverted then that is connected to the AC system for which we brought the power from this place. Clear? So that's how the connection happens. And the advantages of this is that power can flow either way. So if you wish to transmit power from this AC system to this, that is possible. If you want to do the opposite, you want to transmit power from this AC system to this AC system, that is also very much possible with the existing setup. So you don't have to do any changes for that and the power transmission can happen either way. Of course, now this is what you can see is a basic diagram, but there are a lot of things that are happening inside the converter station. There will be substation and uh, whatnot. There are a lot of things, but this is just the simplified diagram, a bird's eye view, uh, which will give you a basic understanding of how HVDC happens. Clear? So that is how the HVDC happens. Now let us quickly talk about some of the advantages that HVDC offers. So the first one is no limitation on the length of the transmission line. Now ideally since we are completely eliminating the inductive and capacitive element in the DC there is no limitation of length of the transmission line. Ideal scenario practically of course there will be some certain challenges some geographical challenges and all other stuff but ideally there is no uh, limitation on length of the transmission line. There are already some projects which are delivering power like 700 kilometers long, 800 kilometers long, even 1000 uh, kilometers long. So that is one of the big advantages that HVDC offers. There is no limitation on the length of the transmission line. The second one is power can be delivered either way. As we discussed, both the way power can be transmitted. Second thing is precise control of power can be achieved. Now when we talk about the AC system it's like the flowing water. It will go to the least resistance path. But in case of DC the control over power is more compared to the AC system and hence uh, the precise control can be done uh, with the help of the converter stations. Then the next one is improved energy transmission capacity. When we use HVDCs definitely the number of losses goes down and V basically uses uh, the existing transmission capacity in a better way thereby uh, improving the overall efficiency of the transmission system that is possible with the HVDC transmission. And when we talk about the environmental aspects definitely HVDC wins there as well because uh, let's take an example of the tower design. Now in case of the towers different towers that we use HVDC's tower design is very very simple when we compare it with the AC. Now AC's tower is much bigger it, you need to have more steel to that and all the stuff but for HVDC you don't need to do that. Let me quickly show you the comparison here. On the left hand side you can see the uh, typical tower of AC system and on the right hand side you can see a DC tower. Only two conductors are ne needed definitely the amount of steel required the material required is significantly goes down in case of DC tower and the footprint of DC tower the uh, the area that it needs is also very very less uh, than the AC tower. So those are some of the advantages of HVDC and now the important part the choice between HVAC and HVDC is very important. Undoubtedly HVDC system is expensive you need to have huge capital to create a HVDC project 
and this is done only for limited application and depending upon the distance at which you want to transmit the power the quantity of power you want to transmit now there is a concept called uh, break even distance which helps in deciding whether uh, the hvdc transmission will be profitable for this particular distance that is the concept is break even distance and based on that uh, the choice is made now of course if the distance is 100 km or 200 km the hvdc might not be the right choice unless there are other reasons like difference of frequencies in that case hvac is still the better option clear so that is the advantages of the hvdc transmission now let us quickly look at some of the projects uh, of hvdc so the first one is the Rihan Dadri project in India. It's a 114 kilometer long HVDC transmission, uh, operates at 500 kilovolt DC and it transmits 1500 megawatt of power. The second example is the Western HVDC link, uh, which is in United Kingdom. Uh, the length is 422 kilometers, operates at 600 kilovolt DC and transmits about 2200 megawatt of power. The third one uh, is the North Sea link, which is the a link between Norway and UK, which is 730 kilometers long, uh, operating at 515 kilovolt uh, DC, and it transmits around 1400 megawatt of power. Now, the speciality of this project, North Sea link, is that these two things, two countries are connected uh, using the underground cable, uh, the offshore cable, basically. So you see. This is the link uh, which is at 730 km long and all the cable runs uh, with uh, from the sea. So offshore cables were constructed and the DC transmission takes place. Clear? Now these projects are really, really interesting. I will strongly recommend you go and read more about this. You can simply Google the HVDC projects and you will uh, get the list of it, uh, which is really interesting to know about. Clear? So I hope uh, this video gave you a basic idea about the HVDC, why we use it, what are some of the advantages and the scenarios where we can use the HVDC. If you found the video helpful, then do like the video and do share it with the people you think might be interested in knowing. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you in my next one. But till then, keep watching, keep learning.